Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics are fields that are traditionally dominated by males, except in biology. But Cronkite News reporter Angelie Meehan explains how this gender gap still exists in the classroom. As a biological science major and president of Women in STEM, ASU senior Rachel Olzer is science savvy. Um, so I went in thinking I was going to uh, be pre-med and go to med school, become a doctor, and I got involved in research and, and sort of fell in love with it. Female students fill up Professor Sarah Brownell's introductory biology course, but it's what they're not doing in class that's concerning in exam scores, so women are underperforming compared to men um, on tests, and then they're also not participating as much in class. Evidence of these findings can be found in the latest issue of the journal Cell Biology Education, Life Sciences Education. Olzer sees this firsthand in class. A male is more likely to answer with confidence, like this is the answer and I know it's the answer, whereas I see a lot of my female colleagues, they'll sort of answer the question as a question. When does this gender inequity begin? Professor Brownell says as early as children are socialized into society, including the toy section. If you look at toys that boys get to play with versus toys that girls get to play with, the boys tend to, to, tend to get the engineering, the, the more puzzly toys, the more sciencey toys. Culturally enforced gender expectations could play a factor in why females choose not to pursue STEM fields. Olzer says the idea can be fostered into young girls' heads. One of the things that I think has stuck with me the most is this campaign to stop telling young girls that they're pretty um, because pretty will only get you so far. <laughs> so we need to start telling them that they're smart. Brownell and Olzer both agree bringing awareness to the gender difference in introductory college level biology courses is the first step to solving the issue. In Tempe, Angeli Meehan, Cronkite News. Professor Brownell says teachers are using a strategy called random call. Instructors use a randomized list of names when calling on students, and that helps to prevent bias.